So I have here the footage of the module with trackers that I put on several areas. Now I want you to pay attention to where the trackers are. I have about 12 trackers and I try to put trackers that define the area itself as well as the planes. For example, I have trackers here that define the left side. I'm trying to put at least four trackers on each side. I have three trackers here that define the background, middle ground, and I also have trackers here that define the right side of the frame. So now what I need to do is just to solve the camera. So I'm going into this button as explained in the module and I'm going to click on solve the camera. The next thing would be to look at the graph editor as well as the line here. You see the line on top of my timeline here is all green, which means everything was solved properly, despite the fact that I had a couple of trackers that had some yellow in it. Under the graph editor, if I look at the camera parameters, I see the transitions are nice, as well as the rotations. And the track status, of course, depends on the track I choose shows me what the residual errors are. So the next step would be to take a look at the 3D space. I'm clicking on the 3D button and I see that I have my 3D cones that represent of course those trackers within the 3D space and it seems that they are in the right order and they do represent areas that I tracked within the footage itself. I also have the camera animation. As you can see the red line, it looks very clean. And the next thing I can do is click on look through camera, this button here, or just see on the keyboard and inspect the size of those 3D cones. Now all the 3D cones have the same size, but the reason we see some of them small or large depends on their distance from the camera. So it seems like the sizes are correct and whatever is closer to the camera is larger and whatever is further away from the camera it seems to be smaller in the frame. Now comes the question for the orient scene. And I know that the scene orientation itself seems to be a bit confusing from time to time. So I'm going to click here to add new coordinate system. And I have this center right here, this cyan looking sphere, if you will. So I'm going to take it and just snap it to one of those trackers that is on the ground. I'm going to choose tracker 9 in this case. So automatically at the coordinate system attributes here on the right side of the screen we can see that the label is coordinate system, the origin sits on tracker 9 and the distance which will be the distance um, in certain units, in this case uh, they don't have any specific units until we bring it into Maya, then I can work with the distance and trying to guess it. Now I want to define at least two axes and the third one will follow. Now it seems that I have these two trackers that can define the Y axes and I can use either these two to define the X or Z or these two. So the origin is already set. As we said, it sits on tracker 9. So under the axis 1, I'm going to change it to Y. And it's going to be not from origin 2, but through two points. Now the most important part, especially when we're working with the Y axis, is to define the direction. I want it to point up. So I want to go from track 4 up to track 3. So it's going to be from track 4 to track 3. And then axis 2, I'm going to take these two guys right here. This is tracker 9 and 8. So axis 2 is going to be either X or Z. Let's stick with the X. And it's also going to be changed from origin 2 to 2 points. So it's going to be from 9 to 8. So first one is going to be 9 and the second choice is going to be 8. Now I'm going to click on apply coordinate system. I haven't changed the distance yet and the distance has been measured between these two spheres. So it, the 3D cones are going to look very very small. Now what I can do is I can go to the distance and change it to 30. I'm guessing right now. 
And I see that 30 is still too much, so I'm going to change it to about 10 or 15. And now I can see my trackers again. I can also determine that the distance is going to be from the same trackers that define the X. So I can take this little ball and snap it to tracker 9. And I can change it from track 9 to track 8 and click on apply coordinate system. As you can see, track 8 is actually here. So what's the name on this one? I believe this one, oh, it's tracker 6. So I made a little mistake here. It looked like with all the graphic elements, it looked like tracker 8. That's why also my X is a bit off. So I'm going back to the coordinate system. X is going to be not from 9 to 8 and 8 sits here, but it's going to be from 9 to 6. And this is going to be changed also to 6. So apply coordinate system. And I can choose this and say that this is going to be the size of 3, 3 units apply. And now I get my points back. If by any case I see that I have some issues with um, the orientation of the grid itself and I think it's not sitting properly, then what I can do is I can click on the grid after I finished applying all the changes to the coordinate system. And once I click on the grid, it's going to operate the translation, the scales, as well as the rotation. And all I need to do is just rotate it a bit on the Y. And I'm not so sure I need to rotate it a bit on the X, so I'm going to leave it as is. And if I click away from the grid, then I have the proper orientation of the scene.